Skeleton describes itself as the UI toolkit for Svelte and Tailwind. And the way I like to think about it is, imagine a framework specific library like Mantine and a Tailwind component library like Daisy UI had a baby and then fed that baby muscle milk for the first year of its life, then you get Skeleton UI. In this video, we're gonna explore and learn how to use Skeleton UI by building this simple notes app here. Skeleton takes full advantage of Svelte's native features like components, stores, and actions, and was designed from the ground up to take advantage of Tailwind. But unlike other libraries, it doesn't try to force its design system onto you. For example, here we have the same exact component with drastically different styles applied to it at the click of a button. So you can make it look however you want. Now, there are a lot of incredible features that the team has built in the Skeleton that I could talk on and on about, but we're gonna see them in action here in just a few. What I believe to be one of the best features though is the people. The team behind Skeleton UI is incredibly active and responsive, and they're always looking for ways to improve the library through the community's feedback. So if you have any questions or you want to see a feature added, don't hesitate to reach out to them on Discord or open an issue on GitHub. Now, before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, me, Huntabyte, in my recently announced course, Modern SaaS Apps with Svelkit, Stripe, and Superbase. The waitlist is now open, which gives you 30% off the launch price. So check out courses.huntabyte.com to learn more. Now, to get started using Skeleton, we actually first need to install it. And since it's so tightly integrated with Tailwind, setting everything up manually can be a bit of a pain. So we're going to be using this Skeleton CLI option, which sets up a new SvelteKit project with Skeleton UI and Tailwind already installed. However, if you want to install it manually, you certainly can. The instructions are here in the docs. Now it's going to walk you through the normal SvelteKit setup and then offer some additional component dependency options. I'm just going to select both of these for this demo, but of course, only select the ones that you actually need. We're also going to add both Tailwind plugins for forms and typography, because why not? And then it's going to prompt us to select a theme. And if we go back to the docs here, we can see that Skeleton has a few different themes to choose from out of the box. Now we're going to be creating our own theme here in just a few. So we're going to go with the default skeleton theme for now. Then we'll select bare bones and it's going to install all the dependencies and scaffold out the project. Once it's complete, we can open it up in our favorite text editor and start the dev server. So as you can see, we now have a SvelteKit app running with skeleton UI ready to go. Now let's create our custom theme by going back to the skeleton docs, clicking theme, and then create a theme. Skeleton provides us with a theme generator that not only allows us to customize and see the changes in real time, but also gives us dark and light mode toggles and disapproves of our color choices if they aren't accessible. What enables this theme capability behind the scenes is a powerful design token system. And design tokens, if you're not familiar, are essentially a way to abstract your design system into a set of variables that are then used to derive other styles out of. So this allows you to easily change your entire design system without having having to go through and change every single instance of a color, font size, or border radius, right? Now, Skeleton does some really cool things with design tokens for balancing out colors and styling components. So if you're interested in learning more about how it's working behind the scenes, definitely check out this portion of the docs here. Now, if you jack up the theme beyond repair, you can always reset it to the default by toggling the preview off and then back on again. I already have some colors picked out here, so I'm just going to copy and paste them in. And then now if we scroll down a bit, we can see that we have a few different options for our theme. We can customize the font family, the text color, border radius, and border sizes. These are going to get applied to those design tokens that are used throughout the rest of the theme. So once everything looks good, we can click on show theme CSS, and it's going to give us the CSS of the theme that we just created. So let's copy this and then paste it into a new file in the source directory of our project called theme.postcss. Now, something you might notice here is that the color variables look a bit weird. They just have the three RGB color channels. This is because they have to work with Tailwind's opacity modifier syntax. So if you want to customize these colors further, like not even use the theme generator, then you could simply add your existing colors here in hex format and then convert them all to RGB using the hex to RGB extension for VS Code. All you have to do is just select all your colors, controller command P, type in RGB underscore space numbers, and then you're good to go. So now we have our theme. We can replace the default skeleton theme with our theme in the root layout that's felt file. If we go back to our browser now, we can see that our theme has been applied. So I want to start by taking a look at elements, which are your common UI elements consisting of HTML and CSS. There's no Svelte component imports required. Elements are the building blocks of components. So if we add a button here and we give it a class of BTN, we're going to see that it does have some default button styles applied to it. It's kind of a bit hard to see because we don't have a background color. So your first instinct might be to add one of our custom theme colors like BG primary 500, but immediately there's an issue. Text color is white. It's not accessible. It looks terrible. The correct way to style this is to use variants, which are can styles that automatically apply the right colors in the right places to the element. So you can check out the different variants here in the docs, and you can see that depending on the variant, the text color is adapted as well. And this all goes back to what we set in our theme as the text color, depending on the different background colors. So if we change our button here to variant filled primary, 
we now have a button with our custom primary theme color and an accessible text color. If we instead change it to variant field secondary, text color is going to change as well. What's great is that these variants aren't restricted to buttons. They can be applied to a wide range of elements. For example, if I turn this button into a div, the styles are still applied. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to use the BTN class on a div, but you get the idea. Variants can be used all throughout your application. Now, if we look back under the docs under Tailwind, we can see there are a few other elements available for us to use. And to better understand how to navigate the skeleton docs, let's start by taking a look at the card element. So they give us a couple different examples here, and we can even adjust the good old variant we just learned about via this drop down to check out the different styles. Something important to know is that when we click on this code icon here, it just shows us a minimal preview of the HTML and classes that are being used in the examples. If you want to see the full source code of the examples, like this image and all this other stuff, they have a link to the page source code here where you can check out the full example code. Now, if we click on the classes tab here at the top, we're going to see all the classes that are made specifically to be used with this element. And each of the elements in the docs have a very similar structure to this. So once you learn how to navigate the docs for this element, then you'll be able to navigate the rest no problem. Now let's head to this Svelte section of the docs. This is where we're going to find all these Svelte actions and components that Skeleton has to offer. Some of the actions include things like copy to clipboard or Instagram filters for images. And the components include things like accordions, app shells, tabs, drop zones, and a lot more. Similar to the elements, we can see a few different variations are available for each of the components. And we can also see the different props, slots, events, and even keyboard actions if any exist for that component. We're going to come back to these in a bit when we're building out our app to investigate them a bit more, but these are here if you want to check them out now. Now, the last part of the docs where things get a bit more interesting, the utility section is where we can find all the, you guessed it, utilities that Skeleton has to offer. Some of the utilities include things like toasts, modals, pop-ups, and even a local storage store, which we're going to use here in a little bit. So now we've taken a good look at the docs, let's start to build out our app. Let's start by setting up a basic layout or shell for our app using the app shell component. So the app shell docs page has this interactive example we can use to see where the different slots are in the shell. This is very useful to determine which slots you actually need to get the desired layout. Now we're not going to be using all of these, but it's nice to be able to visualize them like this anyways. There are a couple of prereqs we have to take care of before we can actually use the app shell. First, we have to add some classes to the app.html file to enable the app shell to fully expand. And we also need to update our global style sheet to prevent duplicate scroll bars. So let's go ahead and make those adjustments inside of our code now. Then I'm just going to copy this app shell example code here and paste it into the root layout. And as you can see, there are still fragments for each of the slots. And if you're not familiar with fragments, they're basically a way to group elements without adding an extra node to the DOM. More specifically, in this case, they give us the ability to place content in a name slot without having to wrap it in a div or something like that. Having these fragments all over the place might look a little bit strange at first, but it's actually a great practice for constructing components like this in Svelte. The next thing we're going to do is add an app bar, also known as a nav bar, to the top of our app where we can place our logo, app name, or whatever else. If we look at the app shell docs page, it has a section called using an app bar, and they give us a few examples of how to get specific behavior out of the app bar component, like having it scroll with the page or having a sticky page header. Now we want ours to remain fixed to the top. So it looks like we can just place it into the header slot here. And then if we check out the app bar docs, we can see that it too has a few different slots, lead, trail, and headline. Lead being the far left side of the app bar, trail being the right side, and then headline being underneath of the two where a title or something like that could go. So let's just copy this over and add it to the header slot of our app shell. Now we won't be using this headline slot in this example. So let's remove that. And then within the lead slot, let's add our app name. You could also add a logo here if you'd like. In the trail slot, we're going to add an avatar. It's not going to do anything in our example app, but I just want to show you something that you might actually want to put there. So Skeleton actually has an avatar component with some pretty neat variations, and we're going to use this initials one. So let's just copy it into the trail slot of our app bar. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet is how components, not elements, are styled in Skeleton. So if we go back to the docs section of the docs and then styling, they talk about a few different methods for styling components. The recommended way is through these style props that are provided by each component, which allow you to override some of the default. From my understanding, these are the classes that they expect you to want to change, right? But you can also use the class attribute to provide any utility class that you'd like. So you can completely customize them right here. And then there's also tailwind arbitrary variants, as well as a global styles override. We're just going to stick to the recommended way as much as possible for our example here. So right now our avatar is looking a bit big. And if we check the props for the avatar component, we can see that there is a width prop that we can use. Its default is set to 16. So let's update that to 10. And now we have a nice little avatar in the top right corner of our app. The next thing we'll add is a response sidebar navigation, which is pretty popular nowadays. Now, Skeleton has a tutorial for this on their blog, but I figured I'd show you how to do it here as well. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is add a bit of breathing room to our page content by adding some classes around the slot. You can either wrap the slot like I'm doing here, or you can add it to the individual page components. It doesn't really matter. And then to change the style of the sidebar itself, we can use the slot sidebar left prop on the app shell component. We're going to set it to a width of 52 to give it a width of 13 rem, and then set the background to a slightly lighter background than the page content. Next, let's make a navigation component 
component, which will allow us to render out our nav links in multiple different places throughout the app. So I'm just going to make a navigation.svelte file inside of lib slash components and then populate it with a very basic nav element like so. I'm using a few dummy links here just for the example, but you get the idea. Then in the skeleton docs under tailwind lists, we can see there is a navigation list. And all we have to do to achieve this style is add the list nav class to our nav element. And then now we can import this component into our root layout and add it to the sidebar left slot of the app shell. So our sidebar is looking great right now, but we still need to make it responsive. So let's change the slot sidebar left prop to have a default width of zero. And then for medium and above screens, we're going to make the width 52, which is, I believe, around 13 rep. We'll also remove the padding we added earlier here and instead add it to the navigation component. Now, when we resize the window, we can see the sidebar is hidden on smaller screens and visible on larger screens, but we're still missing the hamburger menu. So let's add that to the app bar's lead slot. The hamburger menu is just a simple SVG icon inside of a button. The next thing we need to do is add a drawer component, which is going to slide out from the left side of the screen when the hamburger menu is clicked. Now, Skeleton has a drawer utility, which uses the singleton pattern, meaning we should try to only have a single drawer component that we can use anywhere in our app. Now, something you might notice right away is that this is a bit different. We have a few more imports here. We're importing drawer, drawer store, and then if you're using TypeScript, a drawer settings type. Now, this is where the real power of Skeleton shines. The drawer store is a Svelte store that allows us to interact with the drawer utility from anywhere in our app. We can use it to both open and close a drawer, and we can also pass data to it if we want. Now, we're not going to be passing any data, so we're just going to import the drawer and drawer store into our layout. And then we can place the drawer component above our app shell since it's going to be an overlay, right? And then we can add our navigation component to its slot. Now, to open and close the drawer, we can use the drawer store.open and drawer store.close methods. So we'll add a click handler function to our hamburger menu button that's going to open the drawer whenever it's clicked. Now, when we click on the hamburger menu, the drawer is going to open and we can see our navigation links. But when we click them, the drawer stays open and we want the drawer to close whenever we click the link. So let's add a click handler to the links in our navigation that are going to close the drawer. Cool. So now whenever we click a link in the drawer, it closes and we're taken to the page that we click. Since our layout is now complete, we can add some simple functionality to the app. And unlike my other videos, we're not going to be doing any API calls or using a database. Instead, we'll just be using the browser's local storage to keep things super simple and also highlight a few of the other cool skeleton features. And skeleton has a really cool utility called local storage store, which is an extended version of the Svelte store that allows us to easily interact with the browser's local storage. So it operates just like any other Svelte store, but with the benefit of persisting that data to local storage. So let's create a new file in our lib directory called stores.ts and import that local storage store utility from Skeleton and the writable type from Svelte slash store. Now we can define a type for our notes, which is going to have an ID, content, and tags. And then we can pass that type to the generic writable type when we're defining our store. So the first value of the local storage store function is the key that will be used to store the data in local storage. And the second value is the default value. Next, we're going to add a new route called new and a page component inside of it. This is where we're going to build out the form to add new notes. So looking back at the skeleton docs under tailwind forms, they have a really nice collection of form elements that we can use. We're going to use this text area for our note element. So I'm just going to set up the page with a form that contains a title, a text area, and a button for now. Now this looks pretty decent, but we still need the ability to add tags and we can use skeletons input chip component for that. Input chips are perfect here as they allow us to add multiple values or tags to a single input. Now they have all kinds of ways to custom customize and validate and limit them. But for now, we're just going to use the default, which just requires us to bind an array of strings to the component's value prop. So let's first define an empty array of strings, and then we're going to bind it to the value of the input chip component. We're also going to add a content variable to bind to the text area as well. Next, let's add a create note function, which we'll add as a click handler to the button. We're going to use the note store we created earlier to actually add the note, and then we'll reset the content and tags after the note has been added. So now when we fill in this form and click on create note, the note is going to be added to the note store, and we can see it here in our browser's local storage. Now let's add a toast notification to let us know that we successfully created a note. So toasts are also singletons, which means that we import a single toast component into the root layout, and then we can use the toast store to show toast anywhere in our app. And the cool thing is that the toasts are actually going to queue up and display in the order that they're triggered. And we can also customize the duration, position, appearance, and a bunch of other things about the toast as well. So let's import that into our layout. And then to trigger the toast, we can call the toast store.trigger and pass in a toast settings object with all of the props. So here we're just triggering a success toast in the top right corner, then using go to to redirect the user back to the home page where we're eventually going to render out the notes. So if we try to add a new note here, we are going to get a successful toast notification and we're redirected back to the home page as expected. Now let's set up the home page to actually render out the notes. So first I'm just going to add a simple heading with a link to create a new note at the top. Next, we can render out the notes in a grid using skeletons card elements. And we're going to use the note store we created earlier to get the notes. And then we're going to map over them to render out a card for each note. We're 
we're using the btn icon class to add a delete button to each card and we're rendering out the notes tags as badge elements so we can now add the ability to delete notes but instead of just instantly deleting the note we're going to add a confirmation dialog or modal to make sure the user actually wants to delete the note the modal is another singleton component so just like before we're going to import it into the root layout and then we're going to use it store to trigger it so you're probably starting to recognize a pattern here we import a component that's going to be used everywhere we can then trigger it with a store so we'll add that to our root layout and then i'm going to set up a delete note function which is going to handle the deletion of a note inside of the home page so inside of the delete note function we're creating a modal settings object with the props that we want to used for the modal. And if the response is true, meaning that the user confirmed they want to delete the note, we're filtering it out of the note store and then triggering a success toast. Otherwise, we're just going to trigger a warning toast saying they didn't delete the note. Now, the reason we're creating this object inside of the delete note function is because we want access to that note ID inside of that response function. That way we can actually delete the correct note or filter out the correct note. So now if we test this out, we can see that when we click on the X button, we do in fact get a nice confirmation dialog here. And if we confirm the note is deleted and we get a successful toast, if we cancel, we get our warning toast. So that's going to conclude this crash course introduction into Skeleton UI. I try to cover as much as possible in as little time as possible, but there's obviously a lot more to learn about Skeleton. So I highly recommend checking out the docs and playing around with it yourself. If you got value of this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.